interesting. Uh, thank you, Tamara, for the introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we would like to thank the organizer for giving us the, the opportunity to present our project. This is the first time that we share it internationally, and we are very grateful to be able to do so during No Time to Wait conference, together with so many professionals. In our presentation, we would like to go to talk about the database Vittoria and I developed for KROF, together with the precious technical and not only technical, I would say, support of the memory slash video studio team. This project was from the very beginning a true mixture of different skills. Nevertheless, uh, what we started as a fixed term project for Keroff in 2021 20, has gradually grown into something more and led us to create Archive, an open source tool for archiving, conservation, and valorization of digital resources. But let's start from the beginning. Keroff, it's a nonprofit cultural institution based in Milan. In 1987, it was funded by Mario Gorni and Zafferina Castoldi with the aim of promoting artistic research, of archiving and preserving contemporary art materials, and giving access to the acquired heritage. Over the years, Kerov and its archive have grown, have grown a lot, and now Kerov represents an, import, an important reference for artistic film and video production in Italy. In addition to a consistent photographic archive and a library, mostly dedicated to contemporary art, Kerov holds a video archive with more than 80,000 titles, including documentation and national and international artworks. The video archive, it's in particular, is considered one of the most important collection in, um, in Italy, and in 2006 was recognized as one of the archive of national importance by the Italian Ministry of Cultural Heritage. Since 1990s, and we are getting the new slide, since 1990s, the institution has been storing media of all kinds. As a consequence, the video archive includes different analog and digital formats whose contexts have been digitized or migrate over time with indefinite and unclear protocols. This led to the presence of different copies, variants, and versions whose authenticity is difficult to verify. Moreover, the archive includes contemporary complex artworks characterized by a wide variability given by their multimedia nature and technological formats, such as space-based work, complex installation, performances, and multidimensional structural elements. When we started the project, Keroff was using a, catalog, a, cata, a cataloging system, sorry, which resulted unsuitable to represent the complexity and variety of forms and meanings of these artworks. And therefore, uh, this catalog system was not functional for the institution's mission. Um, in uh, 2011, the institution started, um, self started, started to use a self-made database called Jubox, with very few fields, mainly extracted from a previous, previous database called Bibliobit. Bibliobit, the first one, was too complex, while Jubox was oversimplified. In terms of compilation, both databases had similar problems. They had no defined standards for the field, which were mostly open and therefore filled out with dissimilar and incomprehensible informations. Moreover, the confusion was also increased by the lack of specific fields for audiovisual metadata, enter wherever possible. Concerning not only KROF, but the Italian GLAM or GLAM sector in general, a further issue is the national regulation, Ope, Opere d'Arte Contemporanea, which from now on we will call OAC, which every Italian public institution must comply with. The OAC, in fact, proposes a rigid and hierarchical structure which does not allow a correct description of complex and fluid artworks. Moreover, the OAC does not include many fields that would be crucial to describe specifically uh, the analog and digital audiovisual media part of the artwork. As a consequence, in the years, the institutions, all the institutions, had to deal with unprofessional and unsafe homemade internal working system, such as Excel spreadsheets, to record important information and data that had no place on the OAC and would therefore be lost. Victoria. Thank you. Uh, wait a second, go back one second. 
sorry. Uh, go again. Yeah, thanks. Um, hello, everyone. I go uh, on for now. Uh, after conducting interviews with Kerov's players, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, we defined together the goals of the project. The aim was to create a new dynamic tool, taking into consideration the Italian standard OSC, of course, but also thinking about interoperability and further extensions. Moreover, it was necessary to allow different le levels of access according to the type of users. In order to fulfill these goals, we compare the national standard OSC with international guidelines via uh, 2015 moving image cataloging manual and the 2013 Europeana project digitizing contemporary art, <coughs> now on DCA. As you can see in the slide, the DCA proposes a description of the work on three levels, work and expression, manifestation and item. The first represents the artwork as an abstract uh, concept that does not change according to the different physical manifestations it may have. Then comes the manifestation, which is, quote, a physical digital representation of an expression of the artwork, and it can be a set of physical things containing multiple expressions of work. End of the quote. At last, there is the item, a single physical example of the manifestation. <laughs> Uh, the FIAF uh, also shares the same conceptual model of DCA, but on four levels, adding the variant of the work with the reference to how it was originally conceived and produced. In comparison to the international models, OSC has a hierarchical structure too, but in, it considers only a main level called scheda madre, which corresponds to the work and several derived schede figlie, which could correspond to expression, manifestation, and item. Even before identifying the different metadata describing the work, it was therefore necessary to imagine a system that would allow redefining the levels of the OSC in relation to DCA and FIAF. We chose then to outline a relational, non hierarchical and horizontal model in order to respect the fluid nature of these artworks. This structure, in fact, enables one to easily create, modify, or delete predefined relations between artworks' components, as well as between different artworks. As you can see in the scheme, we adopted a one-to-one -one relationship between the abstract concept of the work, here, scheda madre, and the content of the concrete object, here, submedium. The submedium is how the work will manifest itself in the item through a video, a paper, a photo, and hardware, etc. But at this level, it is still conceptual. In the lower level of the structure, there is then the item, which is the actual physical medium. The relation between the submedium and the medium is one to many. In this way, it is possible to keep track of the preservation history of the submedium content. We would point out that so far we have spoken of artworks with their metadata to describe, but we cannot forget that also the documentation of an exhibition or the single video in a complex artwork, for example, has its own metadata. We then decided that the scheda madre should represent not only artworks, but also documentations. For instance, a simple situation would be when the scheda madre represents a single channel video. Then the submedium describes the video manifestation and the medium represents the physical video. But then, but when the scheda madre described uh, a complex work, such as a multi-channel installation, there will be no submedium related, but other schede madri. This happens because each video that is part of the multi-channel installation is not necessarily made by the same authors of the installation itself. Moreover, each video could also be used in another different installation. We will therefore have as many schede madri as there are components in the installation. Each scheda madre component is then related through defini defined relations to the first scheda madre, representing the whole multi-channel installation. In this way, each scheda madre component can be easily linked to the multi-channel installation, but also to other components, versions, artworks, and documentations that are represented by Schede Madri 2. 
In this way, the new structure allows defined and precise, but also easily changeable relationships between the schede madri, whether they are elements of the same complex work or whether they are components, versions, artworks, and documentations. Yeah, so once this structure was defined, we then decided to add some specific elements and tools that, in our opinion, could be considered a plus of archive. Wherever possible, we mainly adopt uh, the multi-choice choice fields, which can be always supplemented with a specific access. As a, for the structure, we used the definition, attributes, and terminologies coming from the pre-existing national and international thesauri, but also from experience gained in the field. This enables an easier interoper interoperability and precise description, limiting human mistakes such as typing errors, use of synonyms, non-contextualized information, and different ways of naming the same things. Multiple choice fields are also used for defining the horizontal relationships between schede madri, as well as between the items medium and submedium. This allows to automatically define the type of reciprocal relations between two elements. For instance, if a file A is the master of a file B, the system will automatically propose the reciprocal relationship file, as for example, file B is the exhibition copy of A, or file B is the access copy of file A, depending on the cataloger entries. In the same way, an exhibition will be linked to the works it hosted, a conference to the works mentioned, and so on. Moreover, audiovisual, file, audiovisual file met, files metadata are automatically extracted with MediaConch, MediaInfo, and FFProbe, and then stored in archive. It is also possible to extract videos qualitative data, as for example, saturation, brightness, and to have qualitative checks regarding automatic conversion of files through a comparison between the original and the converted file. We thought it was a great advantage where possible to automate specific operation in order to make cataloging more efficient and precise, but above all, in order to store and register all the possible information regarding a file, which could be useful in the future to restore it. We also considered the issue in managing and preserving a digital archive on the long term. As soon as a file enters the, other, the database, whether the whether it is an artist copy, a variant, a master, or whatever, archive can automatically locate, locate the file into different storage systems, depending on their use, cold storage for long-term preservation and hot storage for immediate access. Furthermore, in order to verify if a, if a migration, a coding, or any other preservation intervention is needed, archive gives the possibility to set an alarm with a, when a specific period of time has passed. In addition, archive can automatically convert files into streaming, exhibition, and access copies according to protocols that can be set previously following international and future proof standards. This avoids error and twins in file conversion that risk to burden the preservation system. Moreover, archive allows to compare different digital copies of the same item, and if connected to a museum's displays, it will directly send the files in the exhibition space, avoid, avoiding physical copies. Finally, archive logs a full written record of the all the changes made, made in the database, keeping a track of the updates, the intervention, the conversion, and also the user who have access to the system. Victoria. Um, in addition... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's my turn. <laughs> in addition to these very specific characteristics of archive, just listed, we also included, included other features that we believe are important for making it a good and functional database. For the reason, um, for example, Archive is an open source system. The SQL standards and languages used as a widely known programming language allows free modification and customization of the database structure. The user can thus always develop in-house system at low cost and quickly according to the specific needs. Archive is then accessible to smaller archives and artist studios that might not afford expensive tools. Moreover, the user can choose between a local or a cloud-based solution, easily scalable 
scalable according to storage space and security needs. Do not forget, since the, since the new structure is built from the Italian OAC regulation and since it also integrates international system, Archive is a suitable tool for all public institutions who want to make their digital archive and database interoperable. The all-in-one uh, all management allows users to save media in different formats, including application and source codes. Moreover, for greater access and control, and the most target service possible, the system provides three different front-end access level, a lower one for the general public, a medium one for researchers and scholars, and of course, the high, highest for catalogers and staff. Furthermore, the distribution of the digital data in different infrastructures guarantees a high level of security while keeping archive open to the public. All sensitive, sensitive data are directly contained in the archive database, but are also relocated on another internal and private platform on the institution via a system of con communicating APIs. So uh, what's now? Uh, we believe uh, that to further develop this managing tool, it is necessary to apply the possibilities that artificial intelligence, machine learning, and information technology offers for the user interface, backend, and data entry. Uh, in the future, we imagine a system that will automatically analyze the digital contents for preservation needs, and it will apply machine learning models for automatic tasks. Archive could also identify context, artistic currents, works, styles, etc., and enable search based on natural language, as we have seen already in projects such as DALI 2 from OpenIE. In the era of technical reproducibility, we also imagine that Archive could develop searching by resource as audio, video, image, NFT, etc. in order to differentiate copies, variants or versions of the same digital content. In the future, we would like to create an even more sophisticated differentiation of the user interface in a way that the data can be aggregated in a meaningful format for the end user. Depending on whether it is an expert researcher, an archivist, or a student, the interface will offer multiple resources and records displayed in modern data visualization systems, such as hierarchical edge bundling, tree of life, etc. Moreover, we would increase the involvement of the public, whether individuals or collectives. We would like to involve them in the production and sharing of original content, like uh, in the documentation of an exhibition through uh, cell phone uh, videos, for example. Uh, with an appropriate validation system, crowdsourcing projects could actively contribute to the process of recognition and metadata of acquired digital resources. In conclusion, the digital works uh, interchange system could also be certified and guaranteed by a dedicated archive blockchain. Um, the next slide, please. Sorry. <laughs> uh, to conclude, the project will be online soon. In the meantime, you can keep in touch for further developments on the webpage archive.cloud.n, as you can see in the slide. Uh, before concluding, uh, we would like um, to make you aware that for the future developments, we are seeking collaborations and fundings. If you are interested in coming on board or if you are developing similar projects and you wish to join uh, forces, please just get in touch. Uh, finally, we would like to also thank uh, Paula and Federica from Memory Slash Video Studios who are listening to this presentation and thank you all for the attention. Um, uh, uh, moreover, if many of you are interested, we can also adjust the webinar to deepen the question about archive. Thank you so much. Both thank of you. you. Both thank, of you. you. <laughs> thank you so much. Very interesting. Yeah. We have some time for a question, or perhaps someone who says, I want to collaborate. That's, that's, that's what, uh, what they're asking. Are there any questions? I think it was a very clear and precise, beautiful presentation. Thank you very so glad. much again. Thank you Thank very you. much.